Brick85 here today with uh, my camera gear out here that I use to make uh, my videos. I've got some questions from some viewers that have asked me what cameras do you use, what editing software do you use, and I thought I'd bring some of that out today to, to show everybody just in case they had a little bit of curiosity what I used, what I don't use. But really when you're you're doing some videos, you, you want first you want to have an idea of what you want to do. And it's okay to have notes. I got notes right here on what I want to say. So you want to have some notes, that's perfectly fine. The filming of it, you want to get into the editing next, and then finally uploading it onto YouTube or whatever platform. The idea, of course, is the cabin trip. Uh, a lot of guys have asked me about, like, hey, I want to start filming them. And I do it for a couple reasons. I do it because uh, I want to have a record of what we did up there, the things that changed, and the fun that we have up there. And let some of the other people into it that, that used to go and can't go anymore. Or maybe that are overseas and uh, can't, can't go hunting. Or some new people, uh, some, some younger folks that want to get into seeing what goes on at a deer camp. One of the other things I do it is because I hope that my descendants in the future can take a look at what I did uh, in the past and, and have an opportunity to, to see what their grandfather, great-grandfather, maybe even great-great-grandfather did in the past. Uh, I unfortunately didn't know my grandparents, my grandfathers. Uh, they were both had passed away before I was born, so I really have no memory of them. Very limited photos, of course, because of the time period. So I'm hoping that some of this can go into the future. And uh, again, that may be not why you're doing your video. You may want to show somebody how to do things like I do, and that's great too. Before I go on too long, let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to go over, of course, you have your idea, uh, what you want to do. I want to film my my deer trip, my cabin trip. So the next thing is you're going to have to film it. So what do you need to do that? And there's a couple options. This is one of the cameras that I use. This is a Sony. This is an HD camera. I do a lot of the filming with this type of camera. Uh, Syntax also brings one very similar to this. This one, this is about the 250-ish range. Also the one that uh, you're viewing me on right now is maybe basically my main camera. This is the Sony CX675, a little bit of a pricey camera. It actually has a built-in gimbal on the lens on the inside. So as I move, you can see the, the actual lens moving inside. So it kind of helps you stay steady as you're filming. Uh, great camera, but uh, you can go down a couple notches and you still will be very happy with what, you, what you're filming. And HD does 1080p, 1080i, and that's what I like to film in. I like to film in 1080 because it gives you good HD quality, uh, but it doesn't require massive amounts of storage on your PC like the 4K stuff does now. There's limited people that have 4K TVs. I'm sure into the future we'll get into that as hard drive prices come down, as the size increases. Uh, just like everything else, uh, you can jump to the 4K, but, but for right now, I wouldn't invest in a 4K camera. 1080p, 1080i, I like to film 1080p, 30 frames a second. Also, one of the, you've seen this, this is the Sony AS50, and this is the GoPro style, Sony's GoPro style. Basically, point and shoot, you don't have a screen on here, there is no screen, but very wide angle, so you know exactly what you're shooting. Uh, this is the Eagle 4K that uh, you may have watched the video on that I received recently. You do have a, a screen on the back so what you can see what you're recording. But one thing that's nice about these is you do have a screen to see exactly what you're filming. So if you have it turned around, you're filming yourself like I, I do a lot, you can, you can see exactly what you have, what you're viewing, what you have in the background. Occasionally, I'll mic myself up. I didn't today. This is a Sony uh, recorder. There's a lot of these nice, nice little pocket ones out here. You get yourself a nice microphone with a clip. You can clip to your collar. Uh, that way uh, you have a nice clean recording. Uh, sometimes, especially with the camera that I'm going now, sometimes you get some wind noise. These, for the most part, record a nice, clear, clean sound. Not necessary, certainly, but uh, just showing you what I use. Both the Eagle and the Sony came with the waterproof case, uh, that you, so you don't have to worry about being out there in the rain with it. 
of course one one thing though if they're in the case you don't really get clear sound out of it this is one of those pieces you can attach your camera to and put on your hat you know put on your head and you can kind of you know if you're out there maybe turkey hunting deer hunting and you want to, to see the or the people to see your point of view a lot of the guys use these and this right here this is uh, say what I'd stick to my car if I'm saying I'm going up to the cabin going up the road on the cabin and uh, this is a nice mount you can mount your camera to it and head on up and you can see what you can see nice suction cup so you don't have to worry about things falling off this gorilla tripod I use this a lot just kind of when I'm holding the camera steady but also in the car when you see me going up to the mountains and I'm in the car and I'm shooting a video this will be sitting actually on my on my dash Kind of just like this and either maybe shooting out the window or getting scenes going by or turned around facing me and they work pretty good for that shape them anywhere you want if you have a tree branch and you want to hook them onto the tree branch uh, you can do that and it'll, it'll stay on there whatever you want so these uh these gorilla tripods these are pretty good these are not particularly expensive uh, all these little accessories you can get a lot of this stuff on amazon real cheap these days another thing that i use uh, is a C-Rig and your camera mounts onto your C-Rig. Let me put it on here real quick, but you can hold it. And I do a lot of this when we're out there cooking. I'll use this and it makes it for a nice steady, gives you a little bit more steady than, than say holding it in your hand. And I also get to put my light on top of it. Okay. Yeah, it's working. So here I have my light. Lighting is pretty important too. A lot of the videos that uh, in the past, you'll see me kind of with a flashlight uh, holding it, say we're cooking a steak or something like that. We have flash showing and I have flashlights. This makes it so much easier. Right onto the C-Rig, this is attached. It's not part of it, but this is attached on here. And I can just, uh, here's the steak frying up or our ribs or something like that. You get a nice, clear, clean picture. You got the, this is adjustable so I can change the brightness on the light. And there are bigger lights. If you need something bigger, you can actually get bigger ones on there too. So that's that's good to have. And a monopod. I take this out when I'm when I'm turkey hunting a lot. When I'm trying to film somebody else. And again, I'll mount my camera. Let me mount this guy on here. I'll mount my camera on here, so I have a nice steady rest, but I'm not carrying a big tripod through the woods. These are really good to have. Makes your camera nice and steady. A nice tripod. Uh, this is my wife's, but uh, a very good one. This one actually has leveling balls, so you can see exactly when your camera is level. And I think I'm going to have to upgrade to one of these myself. And now the one thing between, say, your action cams and your regular cameras is the zooming piece of it. That's the biggest piece. Most action cams, this has a like a... A setting you can actually zoom in a little bit but it doesn't really do a lot where the the handy cams this one has 55 zoom uh, the one you're viewing me on now I think it either has 60 or 65 zoom and you can really zoom in on on what you want to take a look at uh, that Bobcat that I had last year uh, running through the woods I was able to zoom in on them really nicely where the action cam you would have seen it but you wouldn't have got the detail. These are so easy to take with you, so easy to put in a pocket where these are a little bit bigger, a little bit more cumbersome, uh, where these are so nice to take with you. I'll do an example. Maybe we'll look at uh, the birds out here. And here's one with my 60 zoom, super, super close to this. Now with the action cam, uh, you can see you've got the wide view, but you don't have the detail of seeing actually the birds on the feeder you would have to actually edit that to do some zooms when you're editing it to make that look a little bit better and which i do that kind of looks at kind of my cameras b roll and you want to try to include that in your videos when you're talking about something say i'm talking about my lucky buck or things like that you have a close-up shot of the the lucky buck bucket uh, you try to try to incorporate those into your video keeps the audience interested in what you're looking at Plus that gives them a good view of oh, okay now I go in the store I'll, I'll recognize that or I uh, I can see that I, I understand it when I'm up the cabin too I always make sure I have enough memory cards with me 
Uh, I usually try to get fairly big ones, the 64 gig cards, so I know that they're going to go for a long, long, long time. Have some spares with you, and I usually take a few spares with you. Worst thing in the world, you're out there up a cabin, 50 miles away from your nearest store where you can get one. So make sure you have a few extra of those along with you. And while we're on filming, uh, don't worry about the, the filming of the guys in the camp. Let them have a good time. Uh, don't kind of, you know, tell them to be quiet. Hey, I got to film this. You know, you can be joking around. You can do that. But let them have a good time. Let them enjoy the, themselves and don't make everything staged. Just let them have some fun, though. Let them watch TV. Let them drink some beer. Let them, you know, if they got to do something, let them do something. You in the background with the camera, you know, is it, fine. I have gotten a couple uh, comments like, oh, I'd hate having a camera in my face for the whole trip. Well, it's really not the whole trip. It's a lot less than you think it is. And as long as you're not telling everybody, okay, everybody sit this way, everybody act this way, everybody talk this way, let everybody have a good time. Let the let the, the, the time flow as, as it goes. And you'll have some things like, okay, I want to do one special things. And, you know, you get the guys together, you tell them what you want to do, and you go do it. But, you know, keep those short. The rest of them, just be anonymous. A lot of the times, I have a camera sitting on a shelf or a ledge, or I just have it on the tripod, and it's just filming it as we're going by, back and forth. So try to do that, too. As far as once you've got all your filming done, you want to go ahead and edit this part. Uh, it can be as simple as you want, or it can be as complex as you want. It really depends on how much time that you have. When I'm working on a cabin video, and this normally comes out to be an hour long. I take maybe four hours of footage. Uh, the, the video itself comes out to about four or an hour long or so is what I've been averaging lately. It probably takes me four days to put that together because I kind of, you have to watch the footage and then you have an idea of how you're going to put things together. And when you're, when you're, even though everything is digitized now, it's still just like the old school filming. You're, you're putting clips together, you're splicing them together, almost like you were using that old splicing machine and putting tape on there and taping them together. That's kind of basically how you do it. And then there may be some fancy transition between the two, things like that. But, but this has been around for a long, long time. And it's pretty easy once you get used to it. I use Adobe Premiere Elements 2014. There is a 2018 out, and I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to that eventually. It's starting to get a little bit on the older side. I want a few to do some different things. There's also one called Filmora and Power Director. They're simple enough for you to get started, uh, but fancy enough for you to do a little bit more of just, say, uh, Windows Movie Maker or something like that, where you're basically putting two clips together, maybe putting a little bit of text on it. If you want to start with Windows Movie Maker, you can, but uh, like I said, Adobe Premiere Elements, Filmora, Power Director, they're, they're three good ones to, to go with. And if you're worried about paying the money for those, you can always download trial versions. Most of these software has you know, seven day, 30 day trial versions where you can get used to it. What I would do first, look on YouTube, say, okay, I'm gonna look at Adobe Premiere Elements. Look at five, six, 10 YouTube videos on how they do things then download the software, then give it a go. Or Power Director. Look at some, some videos on there on how to do it, and then download the, the trial version if you like it, and then go ahead and make your purchase. May end up saving you money, where you, uh, you know, all of a sudden you really don't like the software, and then you say, oh, damn, I'm stuck with it. So that's a way to, to avoid that. Just make sure you have a lot of storage for this. I'm, I'm taking about four hours of, of video up the cabin comes out really that's a lot of storage that I usually keep on separate drives and not on my hard drive on the computer because it, it'll fill it up so fast and it'll end up slowing your computer down because there's not enough space for it to do all the caching and things like that that it needs to do. So I do have the stuff on separate hard drives and it keeps things a little bit organized and doesn't slow down your PC. You know I like to put music uh, in the video so occasionally I'll put some sound effects in there. Uh, they can be found. Just make sure you're using royalty-free music because you don't want to get in trouble by using... Uh, boy, trust me, I'd love to use some, uh, some of the songs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, but unfortunately you can't use those because they are copy, currently copyrighted. Google, 
World of Free Music YouTube. Just watch the first ones that come up. The ad ones that come up sometimes are a little on the shady side, I think. But uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. And I think, especially when you're making a longer video, I think the, the transition from one scene to the next or, okay, let's get the barbecue out. We kind of bring, I like barbecue. I like to kind of do like blues or country. Just kind of seems to go in with a barbecue. And then as we were sitting around the fire last year, I kind of went into a nice little mellow piece of us sitting around. So it kind of helps the video move along and uh, adds a little bit of interest to, to some things. So when you finally get to the point when you're going to go ahead and upload the YouTube, very easy to do. You probably already have a YouTube account because you're probably watching me and you've commented on it. And it's so simple to do. Your, your name of your video, make it something that's relevant to it. Like all the, the cabin trips I usually call just Deer Camp. Uh, PA Deer Camp 2014, 15, 16. Last year, spring trip 2017. Since it rains so much, I just put when it rains, we eat. Just because that's kind of what the video was about. And it, I think it helped the video a little bit. Just the name of it. Uh, catchy name can help. The description. Uh, some people read the description and some people don't. But when people are searching on YouTube, YouTube will use the description as actually some of the search features that will go out there and actually say, okay, this guy's looking for uh, deer camp video, Pennsylvania. And because you have that in your, your description, uh, that helps pull it in. The next piece are tags. You probably have seen tags before. They're just usually uh, one word, deer, camp, Pennsylvania. And again, I'm just using this for an example. Uh, food, steaks. Whatever I have in the video, I kind of put in those tags. You're limited to it, but you should be able to get enough tags in there. And tags, again, are search criteria. People put in, want to see Pennsylvania Deer Camp, and I had that in there as a tag. It sees it, so it brings it back and says, okay, here's, you know, here's a list of 20 Pennsylvania Deer Camp ones, but yours is one of them. So it's, it's very good to do. So I hope that helped you. And any questions, again, I'm glad to answer. Uh, send me a send me a message. Uh, I think you know how to get to my uh, email address. Go to the go to the to the, my page, the about button, and you'll see my uh, email address in there. You can put a comment down. I'll respond to you. I know they are getting rid of private messages through sending a private message. They're getting rid of that in a couple weeks. So uh, you want to send me an email? You have some more questions? That's certainly fine. There's White Rook eighty five. I'll catch you next time.